I'm going to tell you all something today that significant portions of Christianity would di- disagree with me a lot on. Namely, that faith has little to do with you or me or anybody else. Kind of feels weird to say something like that, doesn't it? That faith doesn't really have anything to do with us. I mean, we often talk about things like, oh, I brought this person to faith, or this person brought me to faith, or it's because of this person that I know the Lord. And so, you know, as if something that we do creates faith in another person, as if we're convincing people that God is real and we should believe in him. That's not what the parables that Jesus tell today are saying. What the parables that Jesus tells today kind of treat faith like a plant. And now we know how much I love plant metaphors. I'm so good with plants. But these ones I can actually follow because I understand, I remember way back in elementary school, when I had to plant a plant, and we, 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 don't, we put them in the little, uh, little Dixie cups, and you put the dirt in, and you put the seed in, and then you just set it on the side of the, uh, or the windowsill, and you basically stared at the plants while you were supposed to be listening to the teacher. Because plants were usually more interesting. So the parables we have today, the two that we read in... Today's gospel are part of a longer series of parables that Jesus is telling, starting with the sower who sows seed. Now, that first one is probably one that you remember. It's a guy that he's, he's a farmer, and he's sowing seed, and he's basically throwing it everywhere. It's the most inefficient way of sowing seed I've ever seen, because he's just throwing it out there. Wherever it lands, it happens to land. Some of it lands on a path, and the birds come and they munch it up. Some of it lands on rocky soil, and it springs up real fast, but then it gets too hot, and then then the plants die. Some of it lands in thorny soil, and the thorns just choke out the plants that were supposed to grow, and nothing happens. But some of it lands on good soil, and it grows, and it produces fruit, and there's seeds, and it's great, and it's wonderful, and that's the good soil. The idea, of course, is that the farmer is sowing God's word and the different ways that people hear God's word when it's sown are the different types of soil. The second parable is a reminder for us that God's word is meant to be shared using the example that if you're going to light a lamp, you're not going to put it under your bed because if you do, you're just going to end up with a bed on fire and no one's going to actually see the lamp that you lit. So of course, Like a lamp should be shared, God's word also should be shared. Now, I'm going to skip the third parable for a minute, and I'm going to come back to it. Uh, The third one is the parable of the growing seed. And then the fourth one is Jesus saying that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Now, how many of you have ever seen an actual mustard seed? handful of you. For those that haven't, um, there's a mustard seed. Those are mustard seeds. They're not very big, right? Now, how many of you have seen a mustard plant? A couple of you. This is a mustard plant. That is a people. (laughs) Do you see the size of the people compared to the size of the mustard plant? So Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. A little bit will grow into an amazing thing. Now, it just so happened that that's exactly how the kingdom of God played out. What started with Jesus became 12, became 100, became 3,000, and then it grew from there. So the kingdom of God really did go from an itty-bitty mustard seed into that monstrosity. So the third parable. Jesus continuing this theme of agricultural metaphors, which really does make sense because most of the people around there would have at least had an understanding of how farming worked. 
And he talks about this seed. And he says that a farmer plants the seed. Can the farmer make it grow? Does the farmer have any control over whether or not the seed actually grows? I mean, sure, you can water it, and you can fertilize it, and you can encourage it to grow, but the seed itself, it's either going to grow or it's not. I mean, now, granted, you can do a lot to make sure it doesn't grow, but there's only so much you can do. If that seed doesn't want to grow, it's not going to. Now, when it comes to faith, it's kind of the same way. I mean, have you ever had someone that you've just been trying to get to have faith and they just don't? You keep trying and you keep trying and you, you do all of these things like you, you tell them what God's doing in your life, you tell them about sin, you tell them about this, you tell them about that, and nothing works. It's frustrating, right? Just like it would be frustrating if you plant a plant and the seed never catches. Because it's not us that grow faith in a person. Just like it's not us that grows a seed, it's God that grows faith in a person. And it's God that grows the seed. So if anyone's going to come to faith in God, it's because the Holy Spirit's worked in them enough to get over their sinful nature. And now we all know how big of a fight it can be to wrestle with our own sinful nature. And we know Jesus. Imagine how hard it is for someone who doesn't know Jesus to wrestle with the sinful nature and the working of the Holy Spirit in them. I mean, this is... Those of us who have been Christians for a long time sometimes forget what it's like for people who don't believe. But that's not to say that we shouldn't stop trying. It's not to say that we shouldn't stop sowing God's word. But instead, we just shouldn't, we, we need to try not to get discouraged when things don't go according to our plan. Because Paul writes, since then we know what it is to fear the Lord, we try to persuade men. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died to raise them, but for him who died for them and was raised again. We share God's good news because of our faith that the Holy Spirit has grown in us but that doesn't mean everyone will hear it. In my front lawn, there's a big dead spot. It's getting water. It's, re it's, it's even reasonably in the shade, but there's this big dead spot. It keeps not growing in. I hate that dead spot. I want that dead spot to go away. But I'm not going to stop watering my lawn just because I have a dead spot. There's things that you have to do to make a dead spot in your lawn go away. But at some point, you just have to trust that God's going to make plants grow there. It's not our job to take that little mustard seed and turn it into that monstrosity that is a mustard tree. It's God who does that, and it takes a lot of pressure off of us because all we have to do is share Christ. All we have to do is be Christ. Now, I've heard more than once from folk who are at this church that there's not a lot that we can do. Because Holy Cross is an older congregation, and there's just stuff that Holy Cross just can't do. Well, to that, I would use Colonel Sherman T. Potter's favorite expression, which I'm not going to share at this moment, but several of you who are smiling know what it is. Look at the end of Psalm 92 that we chanted this morning. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green 
proclaiming the Lord is upright, he is my rock, there is no wickedness in him. I will concede that there are some ways of sharing Christ that Holy Cross can't do. I'll concede that. There's stuff that we're just, that's just not going to happen. But there's stuff that we can do. One advantage of experience is sharing it. One advantage of experience is telling others what you have learned. We know God over a lifetime. We know that he is our rock. We can proclaim confidently the things that he has done for us. And as we do that, not by standing on a street corner and yelling about how great God is, but just to people that we come across, to the people that we talk to. And in doing so, we can plant that seed. And then trust the Holy Spirit to nourish it, to sustain it, and to grow it into a plant.